SpaceX has long been known for its highly successful space programs, including the Falcon rocket series, the Dragon spacecraft, and even the Starship program, despite the latter still being a work in progress. With every project, SpaceX continuously pushes itself toward new concepts and groundbreaking milestones. While Falcon and Dragon have fully achieved the missions they were designed for, Starship is still on its journey toward revolutionary advancements in spaceflight. Recently, SpaceX and Elon Musk have unveiled a brand new Starship version, one that is completely different from anything we've seen before. So, what exactly is this new version of Starship? What upgrades set it apart? Let's dive into today's episode to find out. But first, we need your support. This is my new space channel, and we're on the way to reaching the first 500 subscribers. Your support means the universe to us. Hit subscribe now and get ready for an out-of-this-world adventure. You won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. Throughout the past year, SpaceX has consistently held company-wide meetings and media briefings to provide public updates on the development of the Starship program. Until recently, discussions about Starship primarily revolved around its major versions, Starship V1, Starship V2, and Starship V3. However, as we approach the highly anticipated launch of Starship Flight 8, a mission that marks a crucial milestone in Starship's evolution, SpaceX and Elon Musk have just unveiled a completely new Starship variant that has never been mentioned before. Musk himself tweeted, 128 meters, 420 feet, is inevitable, as foretold in the prophecy. Yes, this is neither Starship V2 nor Starship V3. Instead, it is a new version of Starship with a towering height of 128 meters, or 420 feet. From the moment it was first conceptualized, SpaceX's Starship has always been designed as a true giant. Right now, the fully stacked Starship system, consisting of the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Upper Stage, stands at around 121.3 meters, 398 feet. That's just shy of 400 feet, already an absolute giant by any standard. But the phrase 128 meters, 420 feet, is inevitable hints at a future version of Starship one that Elon Musk himself has alluded to and which aligns with the spacecraft's ongoing evolution. Musk has made it clear that Starship's height will continue to grow. The Block 1 version, used in the early integrated flight tests, stands at 121 meters. Block 2, which is now rolling out with ships like S-33, is slightly taller, about 1.8 meters, 5.9 feet more, bringing the total to roughly 123 meters, 403 feet. The real leap, however, comes with Block 3. According to FAA filings and Musk's latest updates, this version will push the vehicle's height all the way to 150 meters, 492 feet. That's well beyond 128 meters. But if we rewind a bit, early discussions on X about an interim Block 2.5 design that would hit exactly 128 meters, 420 feet, before Block 3's full extension. Given Musk's history with the number 420, this seems less like a coincidence and more like a deliberate nod to his signature style. But why 128 meters? The answer comes down to payload and performance. Each iteration of Starship is designed to increase capability. Block 2 already boosts propellant capacity by 25%, while Block 3 is expected to carry up to 200 tons to orbit in a reusable configuration, far exceeding Block 1's 100 to 150 ton range. Stretching to 128 meters could mean adding an extra ring or two of stainless steel, each 1.8 meters tall, allowing for more fuel and potentially a reinforced interstage for hot staging where the upper stage ignites while still attached to the booster. It's not just about making Starship taller, it's about packing in more power to push humanity further into space. There's no ancient prophecy predicting Starship's rise, but Musk's vision of colonizing Mars and slashing launch costs certainly carries a sense of inevitability. He's even suggested that Starship's final height could approach 140 meters over time making 128 meters a logical stepping stone. And on X, fans are already joking that 
420 feet is destined, a continuation of Musk's infamous use of the number, from Tesla stock jokes to now the height of the world's most powerful rocket. Picture it, a towering 420-foot starship dominating starbase, Raptor engines roaring, paving the way for a future beyond Earth. Whether it's a Block 2.5 iteration or a custom tweak, 128 metres seems not only possible, but entirely in line with SpaceX's relentless drive for improvement. So, what do you think? Does 420 feet feel like Starship's next chapter? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel at this moment. Space Zone will always bring you the latest and most exciting space news every day. Leave a comment below about the topics you're interested in so we know what you'd like to see. Thank you so much. Now, let's get back to the content. Introducing an intermediate version of Starship as a stepping stone towards Starship FUV3 aligns perfectly with Starship's iterative development approach. However, at its core, the ultimate goal SpaceX is striving for remains a major breakthrough in payload capacity. The new version of Starship will increase its lift capability from about 100 tonnes to over 200 tonnes per flight, according to Musk. To grasp the scale of this achievement, one can imagine that the cargo capacity of Starship is equivalent to the payload capacity of three Saturn V rockets, which weighed 118 tonnes into orbit and about 12 times that of the Space Shuttle. In terms of fuel, an extended version of Starship may also increase the fuel storage capacity. Essentially, the advantage of scaling up a rocket lies in the favourable relationship between the weight of an empty rocket and the volume of fuel it can carry. As the rocket size increases, the volume of the fuel tanks can grow significantly without a proportional increase in empty weight. We are talking about Starship Stage 2, but to maintain this ratio, the Super Heavy also needs to have a greater height. This allows for more efficient fuel utilization. Additionally, playing with engine size and optimizing the thrust to fuel consumption ratio contributes to these benefits. By increasing the number of engines, you can achieve a better balance, making it more efficient to lift heavier payloads. For instance, if one engine can lift 100 pounds of payload, three engines working together can lift more than 300 pounds. This is because multiple engines can be tuned to work in concert more effectively than a single engine alone, maximizing the overall efficiency of the launch. That's why both Starship 2.5 and Starship 3 will see an increase in the number of Raptor engines, coupled with progressively more powerful variants of the Raptor engine. Surely next they will research and produce Raptor Viv 4 for Starship Viv 3 and it's hard to believe just how much more powerful it could become. The decision to scale up and enhance the capabilities of SpaceX and Elon Musk for the Starship rocket is truly an ongoing effort. This is certainly not beyond SpaceX's capabilities, as some may think. The remarkable example of successful scaling up is evident in the transition from the Falcon 1 to the Falcon 9. While the Falcon 9 boasts a more efficient upper stage, this improvement alone doesn't fully account for the substantial performance leap from its predecessor. The Falcon 9 is only 8.26 times heavier than the Falcon 1, yet it can carry a payload that is 20 times heavier with only 10 times the thrust. Although it benefits from a more efficient upper stage engine, the Falcon 9 stands as a testament to the advantages of scaling up rocket technology. Much of the design architecture from the Falcon 1 was systematically modified and enhanced for the Falcon 9. Furthermore, the benefits of scaling up continue with the Falcon 9's V 1.1 upgrade. The propellant mass fraction sees improvement, and the payload capacity increases by 53%, while the gross mass only sees a 51% jump. Some of this improvement can be attributed to a higher specific impulse, but having more thrust per square meter of frontal area certainly contributes. In essence, the Falcon 9 becomes more efficient both in terms of cost per kilogram and payload mass fraction as it grows in size. Therefore, the possibility of the already giant Starship becoming even larger is a story that SpaceX is undoubtedly capable of realizing. While it's still unclear whether it will become orbital refueling stations holding hundreds of tons of propellant, 
or a vehicle transporting thousands of people and goods to the Moon and Mars, an extended Starship will bring numerous advantages to SpaceX's and Elon Musk's ambitions more than ever before. And to meet such large-scale prototypes, a simple high bay and a few tents will no longer be suitable. Concerns about foreign objects causing damage during rocket production are a real issue, potentially leading to the elimination of prototypes. That's why SpaceX is expanding its starbase, with SpaceX COO Gwyn Shotwell stating that the factory will be capable of producing a new Starship every 72 hours. SpaceX is already working on a massive Star Factory production facility to increase Starship production, meaning that once it's fully up and running, SpaceX can immediately begin mass production of Starship V3. Continuous development and upgrades are necessary for an unprecedented program like Starship. SpaceX is also constructing a second Starship launch pad at Starbase in South Texas. We're going to really be launching a lot, and we're going to be upgrading one tower while we're launching from another tower, so two towers is important, Musk said. For Artemis missions, SpaceX will likely need to fly Starships nearly as often as they're launching Falcon 9 rockets, multiple times per week, to aggregate methane and liquid oxygen propellants into a storage depot in Earth orbit. Then, the human-rated Starship lander will launch into low Earth orbit, link up with the depot, and receive its full propellant load to head for the Moon. NASA's astronaut crews will depart Earth on NASA's Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft then link up with the Starship lander in orbit around the Moon. Starship will ferry two of the four-person Artemis crew from Orion to the lunar surface, then back to Orion for the ride home. Ultimately, in the next phase, Starship simply needs to successfully complete its eighth flight, reaching orbit and demonstrating the smooth launch and landing capabilities of both its components. This would be a technological leap similar to Portugal's Caravelle. Not to say the applications will be identical, but if successful, it will not only open up the possibility of closer access to our solar system than ever before, but also offer much more. Only time will tell, but it is bound to happen. The entire process of developing planning space missions will be revolutionized as the cost of space utilization decreases by a factor of 100. In fact, the entire concept of how we think about space exploration will have to change. SpaceX will not be alone in providing this service. Other players will attempt to join in, either to get a piece of the pie or because they require different solutions, different types of fuels, different functionalities of Starship Phase 2. However, if SpaceX plays its cards right, it can maintain a monopoly on the launch and capture system for centuries, generating tons of money for the expanding space industry. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.